This is roughly our 46th Mental Health Matters segment. We've talked about suicide, children and young people's mental health, mental health and the holidays. We've had guest speakers. Pastor Allison did several that took us back to those first lessons that we learned early on in the pandemic. And most recently, we did a series on grief. I've been employed by a church in some way for 21 years, and in that time, I've never received as much positive feedback as I received about mental health matters. One worshiper wrote to me, I sit here in tears of gratitude that such a sensitive, deep, caring, and touching mental health message is offered to our community and beyond. Now, I don't mention this to toot my own horn, but simply to say mental health in general and mental health from a faith perspective has become an important part of our community's connection. Since we've been talking about what we have learned and how we have grown from the pandemic, today I want to share with you the top five things that I've learned about mental health. Number one, we've come a long way on reducing the stigma of mental health. Physical health is still more straightforward and sometimes more tangible than mental health. But over the course of the past decade, there's been an increased willingness to recognize mental health as an essential part of one's well-being. Dr. Mark Van Omerman, a mental health expert, says, Historically, when people have talked about mental health, they usually mean severe mental illness. Today, mental health can also mean common conditions like anxiety and depression. More people now understand mental health is simply an aspect of our overall health. The NBC News article I read said that celebrities talking about their struggles and TV shows, This Is Us, for example, addressing mental health concerns has been helpful in this regard. Number two, we've still got a long road ahead of us. Chris Shane, social worker from Columbia University says, While we've come a long way in normalizing discussions, we continue to see mental health care as a response to problems rather than something recommended for everyone as a way to improve life in general. I was chatting with a colleague who works for a foundation that helps direct funds to mental health programs. And he said that the greatest mental health shift will come when our primary care checkup includes checking our blood pressure, our cholesterol, and our mental health. Number three, I've learned that sometimes the best thing that we can do for our mental health is to take a break. Breaks look different depending upon our life circumstances. I laughed out loud when I went to the YouTube playlist that houses all of the former Mental Health Matters and saw that nestled somewhere in between week 40 and week 41 was a video entitled, The Best Things to Do on Kauai Island. At first, I thought it was a mistake, but then I put together that our communications coordinator went to Kauai a month or so ago, and in the midst of uploading the mental health, she was dreaming about her upcoming break. I want to acknowledge that vacations are a privilege, but breaks don't have to include going to an island. It can be camping or fishing with a friend. Heck, it can be five deep breaths. I've learned that mental health isn't about finding solutions when something is out of balance, but it's about putting things in place to maintain whatever degree of balance is attainable for you. And I've learned that breaks help us to see what may be needed. Number four, movement helps our mental health. I love dancing, and I recently came across a TikTok featuring self-proclaimed old ladies dancing on a beach. I not so secretly can't wait until I can be a muumuu wearing old lady. So while you're taking that above aforementioned break, get some movement. Many know that engaging in exercise diverts us from the very thing that we were anxious about, but moving your body in any way decreases muscle tension, lowering our body's contribution to those anxious feelings. 
getting your heart rate up changes your brain chemistry and increases important anti-anxiety neurochemicals, including serotonin. So move, walk, shake, make funny noises in the shower. A woman named Rosie Geis wrote a book about losing all three of her sons to kidney disease. She entitled it, Life May Not Be the Party That We Hoped For, But While We're Here, We Might As Well Dance. Oh, and forget about that thing about dancing like nobody's watching. I say dance like a toddler because they don't even care if there's music. Number five, community matters. There has been a lot of hard stuff these past few weeks, but because of the church and as an extension, the Bozeman Health Board and leaders, I never felt alone. They made space for me to cry. They gave me hugs. They were understanding and grace-filled. Heck, they even offered to beat people up if someone had wronged me. It was hard and beautiful, sorrow-filled and holy. And although this verse has been, from my perspective, misused, we read in Genesis 2.18, it is not good for the man to be alone. We are created in the image of God, and we are created to journey with others. So open the doors of your heart. Allow others to truly see you, and then show up for others. Maya Angelou said, The ache for home lives in us all a safe place where we can go as we are and not be questioned. The church has been that for me so many times. Community matters. Church community has hurt a lot of people, but when it is the place where Jesus and Peter and Mary and Judas break bread together, church community is there for us and we are there for it. When we show up, set aside what we feel like we need, We can be open to the ways that spirit is at work in the community. And then there's that sacred moment where we see that the community isn't the community without the peace of God that is in us all. Now, I said that this was going to be the top five things that I learned, but I need to add a number six. Number six, I've learned that your mental health matters.